This morning our gospel reading is coming from John in the 15th chapter, beginning at verse 26. And reading then over into the 16th chapter, verses 7 through 14, or 15. Reading from John chapter 15, verse 26 and 27, and then John 16, verses 7 through 15. But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me, and you will also bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. And go into chapter 16, verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father. And you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that, you are, to, that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I said, he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. So as we think of uh, the day of Pentecost, and, and for us as Christians, we think of Pentecost being this um, day of the Holy Spirit coming on. But uh, Pentecost actually had a, an origin in Judaism. It's also known as the Festival of Weeks or Shavuot. And uh, it ends the season of Passover, the 50 days of Passover. Um, often, just like in Easter, we think of Easter being just one Sunday, and there were seven Sundays of Easter. And, and in, towards the end of that, at the 40th day, we had the Ascension. Last Sunday, we celebrated uh, the Ascension. And uh, so then today, we're at 50 days past Easter. And so it ends the, the Passover season. And uh, in Easter, or in Passover, and Shavuot, and in Yom Kippur, they were the three holidays that every male Jew was to come to Jerusalem. If at all possible, they were to come to Jerusalem and celebrate this with the Lord and with God's people. There are two aspects that are seen as a part of Shavuot. In Leviticus, in the 23rd chapter, it talks about it was a time to present the grain offering, the new grain offering, uh, to the Lord in thanks for the harvest that was beginning. This is the early season of harvest. And uh, there were often readings from the book of, Luke, of Ruth. Um, if you think back to the story of Ruth and Boaz, and as she went down to the grain fields, and, and Boaz then claimed her um, to, to be it as she has... She's, she's a Midianite. She's not a Jew. and um, But she'd been married to a Jew. Her husband had died. And she came back with her mother Naomi. Declared that Naomi's God would be her God. And Naomi's people would be her people. And they got back. And uh, Naomi's husband had died. All of her sons had died. So Naomi was very poor. And, and they didn't have anything to eat. And Ruth went out and she gleaned from the fields. And Boaz was struck by her and um, 
then took her, claimed her to be his wife, and why is that significant? Because Ruth is in the lineage of Jesus. So go back to Matthew and look at what do you mean? There was a Gentile? That was the great, 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 great grandmother of Jesus? Yep. <laughs> Jesus had that in his lineage. So, uh, so that's celebrated this time. But it's also a celebration of Exodus in chapter 19 and 20 that this time it was believed that God gave to Moses on Mount Sinai the Ten Commandments. The Ten Words. And so we still got up here uh, our Ten Commandments. I've kept them up here during this time as we were going through looking at the words of endearment and wanting to get to this time as we come to, to Pentecost. This is the giving of the Ten Commandments, the Ten Words, that this would be the way that people would understand who God is and what it was to know God and to live according to God. To live in God's character, his moral photograph. Um, and so these are the things that are celebrated in this time. So for Christianity, though, it adds another aspect to it. The living word, the Holy Spirit, is given afresh and anew to constantly be present with the people of God. If you go back and look in Jeremiah chapter 31, God says to Jeremiah, I will put my law within them. I will write it on their hearts. And then in Ezekiel in the 36th chapter, right before the part that we read, it said, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. So I'll take out your heart of stone and I'll give you a heart of flesh. I'll take out the callousness of your spirit. And I'll give you a new spirit. And then right at the end of where we read in Ezekiel 37 verse 14. That spirit is further stated. I will put my spirit within you. And then you will no longer be dry bones. Then you will live. You will live. You will have the heart of God beating within you. You will have the spirit of God beating within you. The breath of God comes into us anew and afresh. And we rise up from our spiritual death to be a mighty army, an exceedingly great army the people of God, to do the will of God in the world today. So this giving of Pentecost, this giving of the Holy Spirit, is a very significant event for us. The Reverend Fred uh, Craddock, who's a professor of preaching in New Testament at a seminary down in Georgia, was one time a, a guest lecturer at another seminary. And, and as he was getting ready to, he was there for a series of lectures, as he was getting ready to begin speaking, a student stood up and said, before you speak, I need to know, are you Pentecostal? And Professor Craddock looked at him. The, the room became silent and he looked around to see if the dean of the seminary was there, the person that had invited him to speak, is like hoping he would you know, take care of this issue, and, and he was nowhere to be seen. And so Craddock looked at him, and he said, do you mean do I belong to the Pentecostal church? And the man said, no, I mean, are you Pentecostal? Craddock then asked, are you asking if I'm charismatic? The student said, I'm asking if you're Pentecostal. 
Craddock said, do you want to know if I speak in tongues? And the student again said, I want to know if you're Pentecostal. And Craddock said, well, I don't know what your question is. The student replied, obviously, you're not Pentecostal. And he walked out of the room. So Craddock was asking, are you talking about a denomination? Are you talking about a, a practice? Are you talking about a particular behavior of speaking? To, what are you referring to? And the student was like, well, obviously you're not. You don't know what the question, how to answer the question. And perhaps you think, as Craddock, I don't know what you're after. And join the client, crowd. No clue what the student was after. He didn't define himself, and, and unfortunately, people throughout the history of the church have shifted and filtered and conjured up a multitude of religious doctrines and traditions and practices connected to Pentecost that add confusion and distortion to God's promise and to Jesus' teaching on the Holy Spirit. And later, what we see the apostles is they also write on the Holy Spirit. If we look at this passage that we've mentioned lately in John's 14 through 16 and 17, Jesus' prayer, Jesus gives two images about the Holy Spirit. There are several terms that are used depending on which translation of the Bible uh, you have and, and you look at. And so you'll say, well, I thought it was called this. Well, that's because that's what that translation choose, chose. But it's two images. The first image is that the Holy Spirit is the helper, the comforter, the paraclete. Okay, so all those are really used in the same spot in the scripture. And they're all referring to and meaning the same type of thing. That's one image. The other is that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. He is a teacher. He's the spirit of God. And all of those can combine and be related. And, and these are interrelated. They're not two separate exclusive ideas. They're, they're connected to each other. They're like two sides of a coin. The Holy Spirit is not just one aspect or the other aspect. He is both of the aspects simultaneously. And, and that's what we want to focus on this morning. And Charlie Brown if you ever read the comic strip, you would know that periodically there would be a, a frame in where there was a, a stand, a booth, that said psychiatric help. And who sat on the other side of it? Lucy. And Charlie Brown goes up to the psychiatric help stand and he confesses, my trouble is that I don't never know if I'm doing the right thing. I need someone around who can tell me when I'm doing the right thing. Lucy says, okay, you're doing the right thing, Charlie Brown. That'll be five cents, please. So he gives her the nickel. He goes off and he's got a smile on his face. A couple of minutes later, he comes back and he's got a frown on his face. Lucy looks at him and says, back already? What happened? Charlie Brown says, I was wrong. I didn't, it didn't help. I need more in life than someone just telling me that I've done the right thing. Lucy says, well, now you've really learned something. That'll be five cents, please. 
Well, the Holy Spirit, as the helper, the comforter, the paraclete, is not just an emotional feel-gooder, an emotional consoler, an emotional encourager to say, you're doing good, buddy. You're doing good, man. Just keep on at it. He's not there just making us feel good. A true helper doesn't just tell us what we want to hear, but tells us what we need to hear. A true helper continues to be present during the struggle. If you think back, Lucy was like, okay, you're doing good. Lucy stays at the psychiatric stand. Charlie Brown goes on. The Holy Spirit is a helper that stays with us during the troubles, during the trials, during the struggles. He doesn't abandon us when we fail, but stays with us through every circumstance forever. He's always present. He never leaves us alone. The writer in Hebrews said that God has said, I will never forsake you. That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a helper who is with us all the time. Through thick and thin. The true helper doesn't solve our problems for us. Well, wouldn't that be nice if everybody just fixed everything for us? Not really. What would you learn? Somebody fixes all the issues, you'd never learn anything. The Holy Spirit just doesn't fix our problems for us, but works with us to understand the issues that are in our lives and then encourages us that we can overcome through the grace of God. And he empowers us with the grace of God so that we do overcome. The Holy Spirit is more than just an emotional. The Holy Spirit is a true helper. I like the King James translation there of the paraclete. Because the word paraclete means one who comes along beside. And so he is right there with us, beside us. And people will sometimes say, well, you know, Christianity is a crutch. Well, when you got a broken leg, a crutch is great to have. You know, when you don't know what to do or how to do it, it's important to have those resources, those tools that will help us so that we do succeed. Not too many years ago, a child, a man who as a child, Oscar Cervantes was frequently getting in trouble. And as he got older, the troubles got bigger. 17 times he was in jail or imprisoned for brutal crimes. During one of the short little stints when he was out of jail, he met an elderly man who told him about Jesus. And Oscar placed his trust in Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit began to guide him and teach him what it meant to live in the presence and the grace of God. Taught him what it means to know true freedom. And he changed. Now, prior to that, the psychiatrist and prison 
officials had said Oscar Cervantes had no hope. He would never change. But through the power of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit at work in his life, Oscar changed. After a little while, Oscar began a prison ministry of going in and talking to those people who had been just like him. On the third Saturday night of every month, it is Oscar night at Salinas Valley State Prison in Soledad, California, where inmates come and sit intently listening for over two hours as Oscar tells them about Jesus Christ and about the power of the Holy Spirit to change their lives. And numerous men have come to the altars freely to discover that what has been doesn't have to be. That God has given us a guide, a teacher to a new life, true life. Holy Spirit guides us into all that is truth and teaching us the things, all the things of Jesus Christ so that we can live as God desires and as God created us to live. Now the Holy Spirit presses us to deal with complex questions and issues in our lives. He presses in what the meaning of knowing Jesus and following Jesus really is. The Holy Spirit guides us into a relevancy of the scriptures. What are the answers? How does the Bible apply in my life today? It's not just a good book that I can put on the shelf and collect dust with. But how do I learn that these words are still living words? Words that were spoken 2,000 years ago. Words that were spoken up to 5,000 years ago. Are still the living, vibrant word of the living God. And they relate to our lives today. Every word in this book God has given us to show us how to live a life of salvation. How to live as the children of God. And the Holy Spirit is that teacher. He is that guide to direct our hearts and minds so that we don't depart from the true Jesus and the true word of God it keeps God's word alive and vibrant today. The Holy Spirit brings new life, a life that is real and different than the world, what the world leads us to. That's the real significance of Pentecost. Pentecost isn't about putting a name across the door of the church. Pentecost isn't about a particular doctrine. It's not about a particular way of living and saying, see, I've got the Holy Spirit. You don't have the Holy Spirit because I do this and I do that. That's not what the Holy Spirit is about. The Holy Spirit is about knowing that God is alive, living in us to help us, to guide, teach us to become the people that God created us to be so that we will make a difference not only in us, but in the world around us. Pentecost was 
and is God's invitation to the fullness of God living and dwelling within us. Is the Holy Spirit living in you today? Do you know that kind of vibrant relationship of God who speaks to you and walks with you, who helps you and guides you through every circumstance of life? Pentecost is God's invitation to receive him and to live with him now and forever. As we go to prayer this morning, sing a simple chorus, Spirit of the living God, melt me, mold me, Make me into who you want me to be, God. Live afresh in me today. If you'll stand with me as we join and sing the simple chorus. And I pray that as you sing it, that we will hear God's invitation to us. Wherever it is that we need, whatever corner of our life it is, to say, God, Send your Holy Spirit into my life. Renew me. Fill me afresh today. Let us sing and pray. Sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us by the same Spirit to receive the right understanding in all things and to rejoice in your presence through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and always. Fill us anew and afresh, Lord. Help us to truly be your people for your glory. Help us to know your freedom. Give us the grace to do your will. Speak to us and challenge us. Guide and direct us. And we give you the praise and the thanks. Amen. If you'll take your hymnals and turn to number 14. 
and join with me in reciting this affirmation of faith, the Nicene Creed. Words that the church throughout the centuries have used to speak about what it is that we believe as Christians. I believe in God, in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy, universal, and apostolic church, and I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For those that are with us remotely, we thank you for joining us, and we ask that God's blessing and grace be on you. May you know the Holy Spirit present with you. May he guide and direct you for his glory. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is a right, and God, and it is a right good, and joyful thing everywhere and always to give thanks to the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. In the mystery of the Word made flesh, you created the new light to shine in our hearts to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you and join our voices with all the company of heaven who forever proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, we acclaim you glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care so that we might serve you in your creation and worship you. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of earth. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you, we might find you. 
Through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. You sent your only Son to be our Savior, so that we might no longer live for ourselves, but for him who died and was raised for us. You sent the Holy Spirit, Christ's first gift, to those who believe, to complete his work in the world and bring us to entire sanctification. We are reminded that in the same night that our Lord was betrayed, he took the bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who out of your tender mercy gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, hear us, we most humbly beseech you. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine and sanctify us and them as we receive them according to the holy institution of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, in remembrance of his passion and death, that we may become partakers of his most blessed body and blood for new life in him. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Hallelujah. Let us eat the feast. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who come to the table of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my room, but I will say a word, and my soul will be healed. gifts of God are for the people of God. Jesus says, come. All are welcome to come and to receive. This is not a table of 
denomination or of a local church. This is the Lord's offering of his grace, of his love, of his joy. As we come, we receive, we accept him as Lord and Savior. And all who will proclaim him as Savior are welcome to come. I invite you to come. Uh, use the hands cleanser as you come. And uh, come as you are willing and able. You may continue to proceed around or you may stop and kneel at the altar and spend time there. But we do so in reverence and respect as others come. Come as you are able.
Join with me in the prayer of thanksgiving and commitment. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out into the world to do the work that you have given us to do to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. We have come and we have heard the word of God. Now let us go as living manifestations of that word. We have sung praises to God. Let us go and be God's praise before others. We have come and been with the people of God. Now God sends us as his people to all people that they may come to know the living God as their own. Amen. Go in his grace and love. Track a numerous times, and then, uh, then we lived in Midland, Michigan. Uh, so yeah, we've <laughs> been through there many a time. I've worked in East Lansing for the last three years. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
There's an offering box at the back, so there are envelopes. Since COVID, we would pass this place. And uh, so there's a box straight back there for the salvage. Slid in it. Drop it down. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Outside of mommy yeah. and daddy. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one that's just like words. So in the games and just words. Looking at pictures and coming up with words. Yeah, so different stories and then pictures going with those stories. Some of them I would have chosen a smaller word. Like the one forgiveness. I think I would just put forgive. <laughs> We don't play over steps. We don't run a church, okay? You Girls, no running. You don't run a church. You walk. No. no. Boys, it's a truck. Let's go. Get me out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Stay with If you're bad at what I do as mommy, <laughs> Like it doesn't bother me at all that you don't like what I do. What the hell you mean? Like, yeah. We're yeah, so you know, those three at least have been starting to say, okay, what are some things we need to do and work on? Some of them had, like, the building in front of them and now the building right now. But there are other things and things come out of the home church. I've just created categories, and you'll see another more on the other page. You can come up and oh, we need to get this category. That's not the point. Who I took is, took that amount, and I may have divided it into different categories. That's totally arbitrary. I just put numbers in. You can move and say, oh, we want, we want so much food and this and so much into that. Or we would like to, here's an amount that you want to budget for this area. It may be up in general church right now, but we will anticipate these projects and these things kind of going on this year. So we come up with a budget for them and send it. You know, like, I know we won't have like last year, we had $19,000 right. sign, and yeah. you know, we had big stuff like that. But coming up with some, yes, and we're still, right now, we've got all those things in the right now. Is it, we can live for the whole year with no income. I mean, I don't know, you know, but yeah, we don't want that. We don't want that. Yeah. But that's a good way to, to be. So, yes, we've never had that lunch. So, this is kind of a new look. Because this is what computer ice in the church. So, this is kind of a new look of what the financial reports are. Okay. So. Hmm.
we do the um, the school pal acts, the low end walk, crisis care kids. Yeah. The I do want to be a sheep. They just oh okay. I'm not as used to the issues. Chloe, well, we get off the piano now. Um, so you can think about it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's just a meeting. I don't know when I'm going to. Yeah. I'm on vacation next week and Kelly's like, oh, we bought that hat. Oh, that's what Kelly's saying. Yeah, and he goes, oh, he goes, he's going to want it. He's going to get up. Mom can paint. Mom can do my paint some painting next week. So, yeah, I was like, hey, you weren't planning on that, were you? No, I had to look at your mom's back on my back for the ball. I was going to the chiropractor about that. So. I've been moving pretty good. As a poor Mackenzie, she wants up, but she knows she stays on the seat because she knows I can't pick her up. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? At least she's accommodating. Huh? I said at least she's accommodating. She is. She's a good little girl. She, you know. She likes to tease Travis and Mason. You may want to go out there and get him because right now his mind is probably like on 10 different things at one time. Oh, all right. And if somebody starts talking to him, oh, oh, God. he may get to. You've got a friend in old, you know what, with Mackenzie. She loves you. All she talks about is Chloe, Chloe, Chloe. I want to see my best friend, Chloe. Aww. And yet, and you know what? She seen Mimi's car as soon as she come across the road because we lived down there. We walked to church. And she said, there's Mimi's, there's Chloe's car. She Chloe and Mimi's car. car you drive. Because she's driving. Yeah. <laughs> and well, you wouldn't know the bathroom. She wouldn't know where Mimi, where Mimi went. Mimi wasn't at church. <laughs> She seen you. She seen you walk up. Mimi not church. I said, "Well, she went." I said, "You probably got the bathroom." You, 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 you can't okay. get away. You oh, can't. Yes, I, mean, yes. I mean, she died. Because first, I didn't know what she meant. And I looked everywhere. <laughs> oh my goodness! I said, "The name of church is Mary